This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. This is a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Jolene, 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 Jolene. I'm warning you, woman, find you your own. Welcome to DBL, I'm Steph in for Jeff and that was a clip of Beyonce's cover of the song Jolene that's on her new album, Cowboy Carter. Beyonce put a personal touch on the song by changing a few of the lyrics and on Instagram, Dolly Parton said, quote, Beyonce is giving that girl some trouble and she deserves it. And while Dolly approves the cover, well, singer Lily Allen isn't feeling it. Recently on her podcast called Miss Me, Lily shared her take on the cover of the Dolly Parton classic. Let's check out what she had to say. It's very weird that you cover the most successful songs in that genre. Yeah, I just feel like it's quite an interesting thing to do when you're like trying to tackle a new genre and you just choose the biggest song in that genre to, <laughs> to cover. <laughs> I mean, you do you, Beyonce, and she literally is doing her. Or is she doing Dolly? Mm, so despite what Lily Allen might think, many are enjoying the new version of the song, like The View's J Joy Behar, who likes Beyonce's take on the lyrics. So, super controversial. Is it? <laughs> is it? It's so, it, it's just like, uh, you know, we're in this weird place where uh, people act like we don't have the internet and facts now. <laughs> and I just wonder if this was Lily Allen's take when she saw Luke Combs uh, uh, cover Tracy Chapman. I yeah. don't know if she had that. She's only been, there's only seven episodes, so maybe that's it. Yeah. But Miley Cyrus has covered this song and had 451 million views. I feel mm. like people have got less of an issue, weirdly, with Miley because she is Dolly's goddaughter and they do it together. But I don't know why, because I love Miley, but I think Beyonce's yeah. better. Well, also, I think Lily just takes issues with a lot of things. I didn't know, I've never heard any Lily Allen's music, but I knew Lily Allen because when I was in radio, when she had songs on the radio, although we didn't play them, we would talk about her because of her personal antics. Mm. Um, so I think she's always kind of been a contrarian. Do you remember an example of an antic? I don't, I'm not familiar well, with Well, I, I think in recent years, we've learned that she's had some it, some mental health issues, so I don't want to like rehash those okay, things. Okay, thank you. Okay, but, say no more, um, say no more. Yeah, but she has been known as a as a contrarian, and I feel like going after it's ironic that she's talking about Beyonce going after the biggest song when she's going after the biggest artist on her very small podcast that only has seven episodes. And I people use a lot of different tactics. We just talked about Tori Spelling mm -hmm. calling her soon to be ex husband, saying that she's going to file for divorce. A lot of people are doing things to try to get their podcast out there. And now that we know that M Lily Allen has a podcast with the question, miss me, and the answer is no. Mm. I find it really interesting that Lily Allen only recently was saying, you know, that she's basically lost her career to motherhood and that she feels like it's been taken away from her. And she's quite resentful of it. What I find so weird is Beyonce is thriving as a mother. She's right. bringing her children with her on stage. Right. She's setting up them up for their own. And Lily's kind of dragging her a little bit. I well, don't know. Lily Allen actually said that motherhood killed her children killed her career mm. so yeah mm. I think it is difficult when you see someone else living the life that you think that you deserve and right. a lot of people struggle and from that what disease really it is difficult and I'm sure her she would rather be singing than commenting uh, these these comments don't strike me as somebody that's extremely happy but I, I hope we don't lose fact of the the her definite right to have it yeah, uh, I think she has every right please. to have it, but I, I do want to say a lot of people are relating to Beyonce's version, love Dolly's version, but Beyonce's version is saying, is telling them, don't take my man, mm -hmm. as opposed to Dolly's version, it, 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 version is asking. Mm -hmm. And I do think that that is a totally different take, and I really do think it there is a testament to Beyonce's star power to be able to dismantle such a popular song and make it your own. Not many can do that right. and get away with it. So I think it only elevates her, in my opinion. Mm, well, Jolene is not the only song that Beyonce covered on her new album. She also covered the famous Beatles song, Blackbird. It's beautiful. Just listen. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly. All your life. Waiting for this moment to arise. You're only waiting for this moment to arise. 
producer Ooh. Paul McCartney took to Instagram to praise Beyonce for reinforcing the civil rights message that inspired him to write the song in the first place. So for those that don't know, the song was written by Paul in 1968 about desegregation in American schools, specifically about the Little Rock Nine. They were the first group of black students to desegregate Arkansas High School in 1957. What do you guys think of that new Look at that photo. I know. Like, how horrific. White people taunting, like... Children. Children. It is, it is abhorrent, but it's important that we know our history. And for Paul McCartney at the time to write about it, kudos to him. I'll throw myself under the bus. I had no idea that song meant the Little Rock Nine. I, I don't think a lot of us Well, knew. now I do, yeah. because of Beyonce. And apparently Beyonce also made sure that four female African-American country artists who are very talented were also featured on the song. And in fact, there's a TikTok video of uh, Tierra, one of the singers, reacting to being able to hear her voice on Blackbird with Beyonce for the first time. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, I um, one of the Little Rock Nine, Miss Carlotta uh, Walls Lanier, and she was on the the top row all the way to the right. Um, I had the honor of um, meeting her because I moderated a panel for Emmanuel the movie, which of course documents um, the slaughter of um, the Emmanuel Nine um, who were killed by a white supremacist. Um, but she was the main speaker, and um, I. It was such an interesting thing. Like when we think, and Al, you say this all the time, when we think about our history, we think of like black and white photos and as if it was hundreds of years ago. And here was a woman who was able to testimony teach in, in very real time. And I think when we integrate history with pop culture, it's a very powerful thing. Um, it's a staying power because it ingrains it in, into a moment that will forever live on. And so I really appreciate the, re, the revamp or also so her putting not only her voice to it, but also three other black women um, is ve just very powerful. But, you know, music uh, can undo a lot of evil deeds. You know, when you're talking about uh, trying to compartmentalize, you know, well, that was 1957, we've moved on. If you notice and you look at the songs and how they, how they move through time, I guarantee you every generation of song had a song like that that was asking for equal rights, that was asking for women's rights, that was about domestic violence, even though it might have been a song that you just thought was a fancy pop song. A lot of these songs mean more because songwriters are poets, and mm -hmm. poet, poems are metaphors for something else. And a lot of times those things are the brutalities that unfortunately human beings carry out upon each other, but music brings us together, lets us analyze, and do better. Coming up on DBL, we are talking with a former astronaut about how to get the best view of Monday's solar eclipse. And is Flavor of Love? Oh my gosh, really yes. Oh, I heard about this. Back. Yo. <laughs> well, Erica is breaking it all down for us in what Erica's watching. So, what's the news? Shaking.
Welcome back. Did singer Monica get plastic surgery? Plus, which reality show is rumored to make a comeback? And now, look who's talking. In this week's What Erica's Watching. First, a clip went viral of singer Monica performing because people are calling out her curves. <laughs> Well, she showcased her eye-catching figure in an emerald green cat suit, fueling rumors that she had a Brazilian butt lift. Well, Monica kept it real in her response, and she even shared her secret. Space. Let me show y'all something. For me, a BBL would mean bought by Linda, because that's all I got. This is what this girl bought, <laughs> and this girl thanks. Well, it seems Monica didn't take it personal because it was just one of them days. Next, fans of all the juicy drama that Flavor Flav stirred up with three seasons of The Flavor of Love were so excited to hear that he was making a comeback by rebooting his iconic remix of The Bachelor. You shouldn't be on the date. That's why I left, because I need one-on-one -on -one time with my man. Well, you you should have told let Flav to I respect him. You should have said, tell me what you should have said, him. that's what and reports online said that he would be matchmaking contestants instead of looking for love himself. However, Flav shut down this rumor and also said that he can't get to the next chapter in his life by staying in the same place because the clock around his neck only moves forward, not backwards. Okay, well, however, Flav also said he's already partnered with a production company for future projects, so maybe there's actually another remix to a popular reality show in the making. And Kiki Palmer is now an even prouder mom. She caught her one-year-old son saying mama for the first time on the set of her new movie with Eddie Murphy. Kiki was trying to get him to react to her special effects makeup, but instead captured this jaw-dropping moment. Do mommy look good with the blood on her face? Mama. <gasps> ah! Okay. I'm not even gonna lie, that was super cute, and I, I actually shed a tear, okay? <laughs> Share with me anything that catches your eye by using the hashtag DBL Erica Watch. We'll be right back. Welcome back. 
Millions of people are hoping to catch a glimpse of the solar eclipse on Monday. Earlier, we spoke to former NASA astronaut Terry Virts about the rare event that will turn day into night. Terry Virts, welcome to DBA. <laughs> Good to be with you guys. Terry, I'm so excited to talk to you today. So we're going to jump right in. You are a former NASA astronaut, which is super cool. And you have conducted three spacewalks and spent more than 200 days in space. What is your favorite thing about being up there? I've got to say, so floating is cool. Getting to move around, you know, walking with your hands is very cool. But the view just can't be beat. I, I took a lot of pictures, uh, shot a lot of video. Um, looking back at the planet, looking out in the galaxy, the view, I could talk for hours about it, and I often do. It's, it's really spectacular. That doesn't include a moonwalk, does it? Spacewalk and moonwalk are two different things. Moonwalk, uh, moonwalk is like a spacewalk because there's a vacuum there. Again, you can't take your helmet off on the moon, but at least there's <laughs> gravity, so you can kind of bounce around like our Apollo guys did back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, have you ever been on the moon? He's very, he's like nine. <laughs> Nobody, nobody's been on the moon since 1972. It's been over 50 years. Why not, T-Bone? <laughs> Uh, it's just it's just money it's just time and money so uh, have to talk to the politicians about that but we'll be going back soon NASA has a program called Artemis hopefully we'll be back on the moon before too long okay I'm done <laughs> <laughs> many people are looking forward to the solar eclipse happening on April 8th yeah. can you explain what is Me. going to happen I, I'm looking forward to it too. So the moon goes around the earth about once a month and, and there's always a shadow for the moon. So um, the sun is always shining on the moon and there's always a shadow that normally just goes out into space and nobody sees it. But every once in a while the orbit lines up just right so that the moon passes in front of the sun and when the shadow lands on earth, we call that an eclipse because people on earth can look up and see the sun blocked by the moon. On April 8th, um, it's gonna happen in America. It goes from Texas, through Cleveland and Buffalo up to Maine, Cavs. and so millions of Americans can see this. Now, uh, experts are expecting up to four million people to be watching this solar eclipse, so please tell us, how do we watch it safely? I know it's don't look directly into the sun. So I'm partnering with Sonic. They're really promoting this eclipse in, in STEM. Uh, they have a really cool space treat we can talk about in a second, but you can get, a, you need some type of eclipse viewing glasses, and you can get these at Sonic, but um, you need something that's very dark. When I put these on, you they're almost great. completely black. They look, first of all, they look cool, right? But they're also <laughs> super dark. They're not like normal sunglasses, and you need something safe in order to look at the sun without permanently damaging your vision, which you don't want to do. No, you do not. All right, they Some gave people me... people have to wear those when they look at me. Because of how, how hot you are? Just the whole <laughs> <laughs> okay. Back to the astronaut. Uh, talk to me because uh, about the drink. I'm the one they gave about the food and stuff. I want to know what's in that drink and what's going on. They're making a special eclipse treat. It's called the Blackout um, Slush Float, and it's black in honor of the eclipse. It tastes like cotton candy dragon fruit, so it's kind of a sweet slush, and they've got mm. some soft serve and some galaxy sprinkles on top, so oh it's a very goodness. space space theme thing and between now and the eclipse if you get one of these you will get a pair of eclipse glasses for free so you got to get your eclipse glasses anyway you may as well go to a sonic and get um get your free eclipse viewing glasses also you've seen a few eclipses terry which is the most memorable for you in 2015 i was on the iss and uh there was an eclipse over the north atlantic so it was one of those times where you know people don't really see it but it happens and we didn't know if we could see it, and, and we looked off, it was off to the north, and there was this big black hole on Earth. It was really wow. weird, um, unlike anything I'd ever seen, for sure. Wow. So it was kind of an unexpected bonus, but nice. I did get to see an eclipse from space. Wow. Total eclipse of the heart is what he saw. All right, Terry. There, there you go. <laughs> Back to me. Speaking of <laughs> seeing things, have you ever seen weird things in space, like aliens or something you just couldn't describe? <laughs> <laughs> Giggled. <laughs> so you got to read my mo my most recent book, How to Astronaut. I got a chapter about aliens. Oh. Um, I I did not actually see um, any aliens, and so it, it was amazing. I saw incredible things that I never imagined, but it was nothing unexplainable. But you know, at the end of the day, there's billions of stars out there. There's billions of planets out there. So you'd think if there's life here, there must be life somewhere else. Life is incredibly complicated. I don't think it just happens on its own. So 
um, I don't know if it's out there or not. Even if there's other life out there, I don't know if they would ever make it to Earth. But may, you know, maybe now that the Sonic slush is here, maybe they'll want to come grab one. <laughs> we, need, we need to grab a Sonic slush and talk some more off camera, okay? You could give me the exactly, real goods. Yeah, exactly. But we'll talk about Area 52. <laughs> Everybody talks about Area 51. Area 52 is the one you want to hear about. Thank you so much for joining us on DBL. Thanks for having me on. And putting up Thanks with our antics on. again to our viewers, as Terry mentioned, you can receive free Eclipse viewing glasses with the purchase of the limited time blackout slush float while supplies last. Thanks again, sir. We'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back to DBL. Did you know that sitting can be bad for our health? People that sit for the majority of their day put significant stress on their joints and even face a greater risk of developing cardiovascular disease. But new studies show that doing just 30 minutes of exercise daily can reverse that risk. So do you guys all get daily exercise? Are you like sweating it out in the gym? I at least try and do a walk after dinner, but my old agent used to have a standing desk. Mm -hmm. But then, and it's like, it's good for him, but then I go in there and sit and then there's this weird dynamic. <laughs> so I'm like, dynamic. should I stand too? Yes, you so, should. Yeah. yeah. So then it's a strange meeting. It's almost like a confrontation rather than a meeting. <laughs> 
got something that can help your joints in addition to Al and his fear of standing desks <laughs> um, and getting your daily exercise is Omega XL. It's a powerful joint support that's helped millions of consumers and is backed by 30 years of clinical research. Omega XL's powerful and proven benefits have transformed the lives of athletes, celebrities, Al, and dedicated <laughs> daily users. Call 800-630-5419 or visit OmegaXL.com for more information. And before we go, horrific we've got a teaser for the new horror Bambi movie <laughs> don't even want to look at this let's see oh I love it. Good. It appears that Bambi is taking out revenge on the hunter that killed his mom, which I totally get, but that is <laughs> I've been waiting for this ulterior ending, alternate ending yeah. for quite some time because I still have not seen Bambi since I saw it when I was little because of that oh very my gosh. fact. Honestly, traumatizing. That, that was one of the most, that was a core traumatizing memory. Me I too. remember sitting with my neighbors and their mom and I was just crying and crying. Like it, that affected me oh, so much. Oh my gosh. This movie yeah. affected you. Y'all better not, you Dude, better don't not play you that dare show that part. What? You better it's, not. That is you mean the only part that's not boring? Oh, oh no. wow. No. What? DPL is new every day. We'll be back on Have Monday. Have you rewatched Bambi? Same I, I time, so. same place. No one Stay has. away from that stuff of nightmares. <laughs>